Matt. Um, I'll be talking a little bit today about how to build uh, living reef with succulents. Um, it's actually quite easy. Uh, this one we did, I think we did this one maybe just before uh, the beginning of the year. Um, we do all these with just actual cuttings, just sticking them right in. Um, there are reeds that they're making now that have an actual soil sock on the inside of it, so if you wanted to use actual small plants, you just cut through the moss, cut a little X, shove in your plant, uh, you know, if it already has roots in it. Um, to start with, maybe I'll go over a few of the basic plants that I like to work with. Uh, this is a, an interesting one they call blue chalk. It's, uh, it's nice for something a little bit upright. When you rub it, it actually comes off like chalk and green underneath. Um, Burrow's tail, this will eventually hang down quite a bit. This is a cool plant they call jelly beans. It gets a, uh, just a rounded uh, little leaf to it. A couple different varieties of jades. This is an upright uh, type of jade they call portulacaria. There's another flat leaf one down at the end. This is a neat one too, they call propeller plant. This is actually in the jade family, but it's known for growing leaves in one direction and then back out in the other direction. Um, this is what it looks like once it's been cut back. This is it in a little fuller plant and we let it grow. If exposed to the sun, it gets a nice reddish uh, color to the foliage too. I think there's a, yeah, there's a picture on that one with the, the nice color on that. This is a nice one for a little bit of height. And it will eventually trail too. They call this watch chain. It just has the little notches uh, in it. Oh, what else do we got? Stringer pearls. Looks like little uh, little peas. Great for adding uh, something trailing on a uh, on a living wreath. In fact, sometimes I'd like to do a whole a whole uh, wreath of just those. Um, you can eventually even wrap it around. It'll it'll root out of the out of the stem. So if you ever wanted to do one with that, you could literally take it and wrap it around, and it would just keep rooting. This is one I honestly don't know the name of. We've been growing for years, but it has a nice bluish color. I like using that just to break up some of the green. Um, one thing to note on a lot of these, and this would be something you would need to do down the road, if you plant one from cuttings and you notice that a particular plant is getting way too tall, don't hesitate to just come in, snip it short. The nice thing about doing that too is you can always take that cutting and just stick it right back in. So if you want to start this with just a, oh, a handful of cuttings, say six or eight or ten, and you, didn't, you thought it wasn't quite full enough, as these grew you could just take cuttings off it and stick it right back in. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. On doing the cuttings on these, there's a few ways you can do this. When I do them here, I take cuttings right off the plant and stick them right into a dry reef. A lot of times when you hear people talk about succulents and planting them, they'll take a cutting and they'll actually lay it out and just let it dry for a day, two days. I've heard people even leave them out for as long as a week or two. And the idea is most plants, if I did a cutting on a uh, you know, wandering Jew or something like that. It would very quickly dry up if I didn't stick it in water or stick it in soil. But with the cactus, they actually kind of callous over on the cut end and they, it actually uh, makes them root better. So you could do them ahead of time and let them sit, um, or you can just stick them right into the dry wreath, let the wreath stay dry for a day, and then dunk it in water. Just uh, while I'm mentioning it, that's the way I typically water these. A lot of times when you try to water it over top, it will, the moss will actually repel the water once it gets dry. A lot of times I'll just take a, a saucer or a pan and just lay it in water and just let it there for like 10, 15 minutes, let it soak it in. If you want to water it over the top of the tray, you can do that, it'll help it absorb it a little bit faster. Typically we do that once a week or once every 10 days. Well, maybe I'll just uh, get one started here just to show you how it's done. The new reeds they're making for these, I was a little skeptical when I first saw how they're made, but it's actually very easy. It is, the base of this is like a bamboo reed that they wrap around this to get the shape, and then they cover it with moss. So when you punch through here, there's very little on the inside. It, there's a little bit of moss on the in, inside, but for the most part, it's actually hollow in there. The roots don't mind that. Once they're in there and they're dark, um, it, the, the moss holds the moisture, so they actually don't even need soil. Once they're in there and get rooted, they won't pull back out. Um, so basically, I just take a 
you know, I have a, a something for making holes here, but you could use a screwdriver, whatever you like, and you're actually just punching through it and right into it. You can you can wide it out to make that hole a little bit bigger. So all I'm doing is taking cuttings off of here. A lot of times I'll remove the lower the lower leaves here just so I have some stem to work with. Just so I have an exposed area that I can get that in there a little bit. Just push it down in. The moss is a little flexible, so you can actually push the moss around it a little bit to hold it in place. And once it's wet, it'll even stay in there better. So a lot of times to do this, I'll actually work in some kind of pattern. I like working in odd numbers for design that tends to look a little better with with odd numbers. So I'll just kind of evenly space this. There is a wire frame under here as well. Every once in a while you may hit the frame, so I'll just, you know, if, that, if that's the case, I'll just move a little bit till I get a good place to push through. The one nice thing about cutting plants too, if you look at some of the branches here that have not been cut, it is just a nice single shoot. But if you look at one that has been cut, it actually starts to branch. So when you're doing these in the wreath and you and you want to cut them at some point, don't hesitate to do it. You're not going to ruin. You're actually going to make it look better. Where I cut this once, I now have four new shoots that are nice and short and low, nice and full. Um, so yeah, definitely don't hesitate to to cut it back once you have it growing. If anybody has any questions as I'm going, don't hesitate to to speak up. A lot of times if I have things that have a little bit of blue in them and a little bit of green in them, I like to mix up the colors a little bit. We'll try some of this jade. That's a great question. Um, some of these plants will benefit from the from the brighter light. Uh, this one with the bluish green foliage will be a little more blue if it's getting some direct sun. The one we looked at, the uh, the jade that gets the reddish leaf, it'll get a little more red in the sun. It'll be a little easier maintenance though if it's not quite full sun. Um, the, the only thing you'll notice is the more light obviously the faster it will dry out so you may just find you need to water it a little more often. Um, on hanging these as well, they come with uh, the three uh, attachments for the chain, you know, so you can hang it, so you can hang it flat. But a lot of times, I'll even take these off and just hang them flat against the wall. They're fine like that. Um, I see some people take the chains completely off and use them as a centerpiece, put a candle or something in the center. Maybe we'll try something uh, trailing here, like the string of pearls. Nice thing about these is if you can make the hole a little bit bigger and actually get some of the beads done in there, they'll help hold it in place so it's not pulling out. They do have a fairly thin stem. It's not going to take it very long to drip dry uh, to the point where you can hang it back up. When we soak it for you know a good 10 minutes or so and hang it up, I'm going to say maybe uh, oh maybe 10 minutes. The moss absorbs the water and it lets the uh, it lets the excess go pretty fast. Now the one that holds the uh, it has a soil sock in it. That one might stay a little wetter a little longer and it may tend to drip for for a while, maybe a half hour or so. Oh, let's 
let's see what else we can do here. Don't hesitate as you're as you're taking these cuttings to remove leaves. Succulents are usually pretty full all the way up and down the stems. Um, so don't hesitate to just pull leaves off to get a little bit of an exposed stem. Interesting thing on the uh, the burrow's tail is each one of these leaves you break off, if you were just to scatter them on a uh, soil surface in a small pot, you would actually get a plant out of each one of these uh, starting to sprout again. I think that's one of the things I like about the succulents too, is you're not planting a seed and waiting for it to grow to, to get a plant. I mean, it's very easy to just do cuttings and uh, and uh, get a new plant started very quickly. With these baskets here, we were actually thinking ahead a little bit with these. We actually potted these up in the fall for this demonstration. And each one of these was made out of just a little two inch uh, pot. So, you know, they grow quite fast. And then once you get that bigger plant, obviously you can use it for chopping it up for doing things like this. The only thing different you're going to notice with this one, this has the, the moss coating on the outside just the way this one does, but this one actually has a sock of soil on the inside. So when you pull the moss away a little bit, you'll actually find you need to cut into it. So you may want to have a knife that you know has maybe a two or three inch blade so you can actually cut into it and cut a circle or cut an X so you can push it down into the soil. And then same way with the top, you can just pull that moss back to, to close it back up again. Good question. What if you wanted to make your own roof? You could. It's, it's a little more work. That's the way they, people used to do it before they made these preformed ones. Uh, you know, if you go to a place like uh, Pacatanj or something that sells the frames, usually you'll find that they are just kind of cup shaped and you can put two of them back to back. I've seen people use, uh, uh, use things like cloth, uh, pantyhose, anything to help contain the soil in there to, uh, to make it look nice. Put the dirt in the pantyhose. Exactly. Um, and then for the outside, what you might want to use is like the long, uh, the long moss that you buy. And a lot of times, people just layer that on and use uh, fishing line to tie it on. And you don't see the uh, you don't see the I line. Think you can use them in like parts. You can make any absolutely. Sure, sure. If you're uh, feeling a little more creative, this is something uh, I tried at home with some. Uh, they are wonderful. All this was was uh, some old wood. I just made frames out of them. I backed them up with a, an inch of wood here and there's actually an inch of soil inside and all this is is uh, like the weed fabric I mean you can use anything that any kind of fabric um, but I did it in the exact same way once I had the soil filled up poked some holes stuck my cuttings in there um, I think these were done just about a month ago they're just starting to just starting to take root um, but again if it didn't look real full and you didn't want to see this moss as these get taller just to do more cuttings and just stick them right back in will that grow indoors yes absolutely yes how would you water that? With these, I've just been laying them flat and watering it right over the. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit of a. You have to wait till it drips dry a little bit, but yeah, easy to use inside. Uh, great for like a, a patio outside in the summertime. The that thing soil, I like about that soil sock is that easier to, to plant when it's dry, or should you soak it first? Those I soak them first. Yes, that's a great question. Uh, it tends to be a little uh, a little hard to dig through if it's uh, if it's damp. It works nice. The nice thing about working with them damp too is the moss is damp, so it's a little more pliable. So if you make your hole a little big and you stick your plant in there and it wants to fall out, you can just tuck the moss it'll around it and it stays in place. Better. Yes. Do you have this fertilize any of these? Yeah, that's a good question too. Yes. When I do the uh, the uh, dump it, just soak it in water. I'll just mix a mild uh, fertilizer solution. The one I like to use is the uh, Schultz uh, liquid. It's uh, you can just do a few drops in water. Um, but yes, you can do that actually at every uh, every fertilizing, maybe or at every watering half strength. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Yes. Absolutely, sure. Um, this most of the succulents will tolerate a little bit cool, but obviously not freezing temperatures. Um, most of the desert plants can easily get down into the 40s, but you wouldn't want to let it get a frost or something like that. So, you know, I'd say from, you know, May all the way into September, you could probably use it outside and bring it into the winter time. Sure. You mean outdoors? Or, um, 
I don't know. Uh, they, they would need to have light all the time. I don't know how well they would go dormant and then rebound from that. Um, yeah, I think I would either try to keep it as a, probably the best thing would be to just try to keep it uh, near a window at least. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Back to the one with the saw can you find that that dries out quick? Actually, no. Um, in fact, I have one uh, hanging up in the front of the greenhouse there, and it's been planted for a few weeks, and I'm going to say maybe I've only watered it, oh, let's say maybe twice. I had one mm -hmm. like that. It was in the frame. I'm not able to get into it. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it was a big, really big one. I got it as a gift, and I had it hanging on the outside of my house. It was gorgeous, but you could water that thing twice a day. Now again, <laughs> a lot of it may depend on the light exposure. So if it was outside and getting a fair amount of sun, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if it needed it every day or every other oh, day. Oh, you yeah. could do it twice a day. Yeah, yeah. Really? And, and, and that's what's, you know, you got to determine how, uh, usually with these ones here, I just kind of grab it every once in a while. If it feels really dry, I'll give it a drink. Um, we do shade them slightly in the greenhouse here, just so they're not drying out too fast. But, mm -hmm. so, Yes, yes. Yeah, we've been using them for... Uh, they do, but I tend to use just the succulents in the hollow ones. So they'll, they'll actually tolerate it fairly dry, so... Now, if we don't have all of these at home, can we come and just buy individual little ones for the reason, or how do we work that? Yeah, so in fact, most of these plants, I we do sell in like small two-inch pots. Um, um, and you could do this a couple different ways. You could either buy individual little pots and and just do cuttings off them and, and stick those in, or you could buy something larger like a uh, like a six inch jade that maybe had a number of branches on it and chop that up and, and get quite a few cuttings out of it. Yes. The variety you need to buy the individual. Right, right, correct, now. right. But they're nice, and, and uh, like I said, you know, once you once you cut it once, like on this one. You know, once I cut the top off, I already see three new shoots, so it wouldn't be very long until you had more to work with again. So if you wanted, you could do just a few small pots, snip them, stick them into your wreath, you know, give it a few more weeks, you'll have a whole bunch of new shoots coming back up and you can stick more in. You can only do this with succulents? On the hollow one, yes. Um, and only because there's no soil in there, it does tend to dry out faster, which works fine with the succulents because they like it dry. Um, if you if you look at the ones up against the front wall, I had, do you want to grab that one, Brian? The the, the big one up against the front wall with the uh, ones that have the soil in them. You have a little bit more uh, a little more option on what you can plant into them. I've done little uh, I've done succulents. I've done uh, uh, hens and chicks, things like that. I've done these kind of plants. I've also done uh, little tropical plants like uh, oh ferns or. Uh, a uh, little protein, some of the things we use for terrarium plants. Uh, so the choices are almost endless with the with the one with the soil in it, yes. But the one that's hollow, I pretty much just stick with cactus or succulents in that. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know if anybody ever saw those uh, Doug Oster's blog. I, I did this one with Doug, I'm going to say maybe, uh, well, maybe two or three weeks ago. But yeah, we just stuck some, some small tropical plants. It's, uh, we did some cuttings of uh, watering juice, some little ferns, baby tears, uh, some ivies. And the ivy's actually starting to wrap around. Uh, but yeah, like I said, this has been almost three weeks, and I, I think maybe I've watered this twice. But yeah, the choices are endless for this type of reef. Since it does have the soil, you can use almost anything. What about annuals, like for summertime? Absolutely, sure, why not? Uh, uh, things like... Uh, Oh, impatience, begonias, maybe things that wouldn't get too tall, and maybe the plants that you could buy in the small cell packs that you could uh, work with a small plant, sure. There was a company years ago that used to make a plastic wreath that actually had little pockets in it, and that was, you could use it for uh, plants like that, but this would work, uh, yeah, quite well. You know what really looks nice? Is that I took one. Real small baby spider plant. Oh, yeah. You put in it fills up very quickly. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, we consider that on this one. Yeah, and another thing I put at the bottom is for coconut. Oh, that's real nice. Sure, yeah. sure. Any other questions?
A soil that has a fair amount of organic matter in it, the one that we like to use for green house is called uh, Gardner's Mobile. Uh, it's, a, it's a professional potting mix, but it has some organic material added to it. So it, it has a little more nutrition, it tends to hold more nutrition, it tends to hold the water a little better. If you use the soil that was uh, you know, too lightweight and floppy, you might find it's drying out too fast. You might find it's uh, having a hard time uh, staying in, in shape in that uh, soil sock. Sometimes I'll find when I set these in a saucer of water, this is getting wetter just from be, being set in here for about five minutes. But a lot of times what I like to do is take a small watering can and actually water it over the top. Because it can take quite a while for that water to whip all the way up to the top before all that uh, moss is uh, wet. These are some of the small plants that, uh, that I was talking about that sometimes we'll use. We'll just leave these in the small pots as this is the, uh, the burrow's tail. So as it gets some length to it, and it actually will start getting a little top heavy for this pot, we'll just chop off the top, stick it in a, you know, stick it in a wreath. If you find that you're getting too many cuttings too fast, you could just take your cuttings right off of here, and if your if your wreath was already full, you could just stick it in some soil and let it uh, root and start another plant. So. so they're great to work with. I love working with the succulents. They're fast growing, fast to root, easy to root. Um, yeah, very tolerant. Um, this is an interesting one that we just started. This is, I don't know if everybody's familiar with the Kalanchos, there's some beside us here. This is a flowering plant, um, and this is one of the few that would actually work uh, well for this. Uh, I think there was one just starting to bloom in this one. Yeah, there's a few of these just starting to get their, just starting to get their buds. But the nice thing about taking cuttings off the calanchos is once you cut them and root them, you can actually keep them quite short. Um, if I let this plant grow, and if I cut the flowers off this and just let it grow and grow, I would easily see this get 10 inches or a foot tall. You know, and obviously a plant that tall gets kind of, uh, yeah, it's not the best thing to use in something like this. But once you do those little cuttings and stick them in, they actually have almost like a dwarfing effect on it. Uh, yeah, I can see some of these green ones actually starting to get the flower buds. I think that'll look pretty cool once you, once you get that with some uh, blooms on it. We just threw in a few uh, little sedums, uh, just a little bit of accent in there. But yeah, the choices are endless uh, with the succulents. On this one, the thing you're going to want to watch is some of these are going to grow faster than others. Things like the, uh, oh, like some of the jades are going to be fairly slow growing. The blue chalk will get its height a little bit bigger, and it may only look like one stem, but once you cut that back when it's tall, you're, it, again, it'll actually branch and you'll get like three or four shoots off of that. So, you know, the more you cut it, the fuller it gets. On this, uh, the jelly bean one here, I can already see down at the base, it's already starting to branch, so it won't be too long before I'll cut the top of that off and stick it right back in.